set the table a little bit just for those who haven't, who, haven't, who haven't met you. Please. So, uh, so thanks for joining uh, A16 vaunted uh, legends of the fall and spring <laughs> and summer and winter. Um, Eric, Steele. <laughs> Eric Steele is our moderator. Eric and I have worked together for many years. Um, he has been a, <laughs> he's been a, uh, a director for the Project OR competition. <laughs> I met him, uh, I don't know, how long has it been, Eric? Just going to cough. Something. I, and, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Practice a safe, safe conference Thank call. Thank you. Conference um, distancing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I came up, I met you, I think, in the, the January of 08. Something like that. And so, uh, he helped me put together the Project OR design competition. He's uh, at that time was writing a lot for the OR Daily and other magazines uh, around the supply chain and sustainability in the supply chain and, uh, you know, different companies doing fibers and fabrics and, and different ways of uh, helping to create more sustainable outdoor products. So, so we're, we came, became famous friends and we'd skied together a few times and, um, and then uh, fast forward to now, uh, we were working on a few different projects together, and um, this isn't one of them. This is actually Eric's project called Steel Wheels, where he uh, interviews people from different aspects around the outdoor industry, covering a broad uh, range of uh, topics. And so he, I, he had this idea, hey, you know, Kenji, what if you got some of your uh, friends together from A16 and had a, had a conversation just swapping stories and talking about how, we, how it happened that we got there and what happened when we did get there and, and what happened after that. So what I didn't ask Eric was, you know, where are we on the uh, ratings level? You know, PG, you know, R, uh, it, uh, what is the other one? Mature audiences only. How it's a wise idea to ingest disinfectant. I think we <laughs> could. Uh, if you start yum, yum. giving out medical advice, I'm in trouble. Um, start slandering other people, yeah, it's a little bit an issue. But beyond that, no, you just do whatever you want. All right. Well, that's all in the art of the edit. So that's Eric's, that's Eric's situation. Uh, do whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff just got a big old green light. My my channel's not yet being monetized, so there's no penalty. <laughs> so, no percentage. So anyway, we, we thought we just limits to say that that the virus was actually launched to bankrupt A16. Was that was that like out of <laughs> out of bounds? Well, no, that's <laughs> relevant. Uh -uh. Right? <laughs> it may have, but they missed because the virus came after the closing. So it was actually... into the punch. <laughs> right. Not, not that we know. Right. You're right. Good point, Rob. <laughs> All right. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to stay out of the way. Thanks, guys. And uh, if I have to jump in, I will, but otherwise. Uh, do you want to just uh, start with, like, who the hell we are? Yeah. yeah. And also, uh, origin of A16 would be not a bad idea either. Well, I think that then that goes to John. But I think first we have to all share our pronouns. Okay. What's okay. a pronoun? I was looking at Jeff. This is fun. We're like the Brady Bunch of A16, you know. <laughs> Here's a story of a goofy Dodger fan. I think I'd like to be, I would like to be with Marsha. Do you want to be Marsha? No, I don't want to be with Marsha. No, no. Hey, look who I found. No. Get over here. This is one of my A16. Oh, there uh, uh, there she is. One of the great I stories. See. Speaking of Marsha. <laughs> Marsha, <laughs> Marsha. <got> <laughs> one of the great stories of, uh, great success stories of A16 in my life, anyway. Yes. Oh, that's cute. Now that she's left the room, how do you really feel? <laughs> that's the headset. It's all about the headset. Don't go bullshitting bullshitters, Kenji. <laughs> hey, so, uh, John, you want to kind of kick us off on the... Uh, the origin story of the company? Sure. Uh, the company was started, uh, it, was a, it was a spark that came out of a 
Boy Scout Explorer Post back in 1962. The Explorer Post was around in the late 50s and uh, early 60s. Uh, the, the Scoutmaster, the chief advisor, was a guy named Andy, Andy Drollinger. I don't know if you, um, how, how much you want me to get into detail of this, but uh, the, uh, the, the thought was to, is the, the Scouts wanted to specialize in making movies, 16 millimeter movies, of their explorations, their backpacking trips and their mountaineering trips and their river rafting trips and show them to other scout troops and other nonprofits in San Diego. And uh, the dads had a little bit different idea. Andy was an uh, aircraft engineer, self-taught, and he and his other buddies that were aircraft engineers uh, had come up with a, a pack idea. And they were making backpacks and uh, the, 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 they picked up the name of the uh, Explorer Post, which was Adventure 16. As far as we know, they never made any movies. Uh, none exist, but uh, and but the but the dads took the name and used it for their little company that uh, made backpacks and later on tents and sleeping bags and all kinds of other things. So uh, by the time I got involved, it was about 1968, and uh, when I visited A16 for the first time, and then uh, became an employee back in 1970, stocking shelves. That was when my dad and my, or my uncle and my dad you know, got together and refinanced the company because it was getting ready to go out of business. So uh, I was fortunate enough to be uh, hanging on both of their coattails and when I was about 14 when they got the company and I've uh, uh, been here ever since. Cool. Let's see, who is the next, uh, next fortunate victim? That was probably you, Sheets. You, when did you join up? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, 19, August of 1979, um, the Tarzana store had just opened, uh, and um, um, apologies for maybe a little bit of a broken record here to some of the folks, but for you, Eric, the uh, when Adventure 16 opened up in the Tarzana location, um, prior to that, it was an outdoor shop, mountaineering shop called Granite Stairway Mountaineering, and prior to that, it was called The Mountain Store. Uh, the Mountain Store was owned and operated by Greg and Jim Thompson, who went on to do Wilderness Experience and opened up a shop in Northridge called The Mountain Shop. So um, growing up in the valley, a few blocks away from there, that was always the store that my dad and I would go to for whatever stuff that we were going to do for our trips. And um, there was a tenant uh, in the same building to the Tarzana Store uh, that was a glass store, Tarzana Glass, and it was owned by uh, my best friend since first grade, and his dad had the shop uh, for years, and um, I was not doing much with my life, and uh, uh, my buddy Joe and I were going to have lunch that day, and so I pulled into the shop, and his dad sent him on an errand, and by accident, I walked in next door, uh, not knowing that it was Adventure 16. Uh, I met a gentleman named Kenny Newmark, who's the first manager, um, and he said, do you know what A16 is? And I go, and I've never heard that word before. And he goes, well, we just opened up. And I said, do you need any help? And he goes, yeah. And a week later I was hired and, um, I was fortunate enough to spend, um, 17 years of my life working for, uh, both the Tarzana store and then predominantly the West LA store, a variety of different, um, responsibilities and roles. And then I wrapped up my last six years being the store manager of the West LA store um, and then uh, started a sales agency that I have now going on our 25th year called Trailhead Sales and Associates. And it was great because within that, I still got to uh, remain close to uh, my dear friends at Adventure 16 and, um, and have all those great relationships. So 40 years later, I'm sitting here talking to you. Was that a good nutshell? Was that an okay nutshell? Damn, you're good at nutshells, man. <laughs> okay, good. That you know, was awesome. You get rep disease every once in a yeah. while. So, yeah. so yeah. That's, that's it in a concise package. Yeah, nicely done. Um, nice package. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go next uh, just because we're going chronologically in our A16 uh, calendar life. So I joined up at Adventure 16, which, by the way, for those of you, because Eric has a global audience, and um, you know, so this is a this is a this was a chain of stores that uh, down in Southern California, focused around um, 
outfitting, uh, wilderness trips, and adventure in the outdoors. And so I uh, really built around backpacking, uh, which is how I discovered it as a, as a scout, uh, buying my first pair of hiking boots at the A16 in West LA. And so, um, and then later, it, it, not much later, but a bit later in my life, I had been working in the grocery business and was uh, going to school at UCLA Go Bruins. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and so I was working in the grocery business and got laid off because uh, I had only been there seven years and everyone else had more seniority uh, who was, getting, who was uh, still on the morning crew. And so it was a great opportunity to go backpacking and I went in the shop and they had a hiring sign out and uh, one thing led to another and I ended up meeting with Connie Self who uh, uh, thought it was a, worth taking a risk on a, on a kid from Culver City. So I, I hired on there, and then a few weeks later, uh, got, uh, got my job back from, from Ralph's, which was the grocery business I was working in. And, and, you know, and that was a lot higher paying, and it was union, and even though I was part-time. But I, I kept going at A16, had the, the grocery job for a, a, a few weeks, and I realized in that experience, uh, those two really different experiences of retail, uh, I did. I was not interested in the grocery business job anymore, even though it was a seventy percent more pay, and it, you know, like I said, had medical and benefits and all that. Um, but I quit, and I just uh, started working at, at A16 for a, a, a lot less money. But it was such a such an amazing experience to go to work every day and meet people who were uh, adventuring off to to. Uh, the Himalaya or to South America or, or to other wilderness wild places like um, like Rancho Park. Um, so it was a, a great experience there. So I so I took a chance. It was definitely the smartest thing I've ever done. It, maybe except you know get married to Susan, but but I met her through that decision, right? So even there, um, I think it was one of the great decisions in my life. So. Uh, I worked at A at A16 West LA um, until 1988, and then uh, Connie uh, asked me to uh, consider managing the Valley Store uh, of A16, which was a lot smaller um, uh, and in Tarzana that Jeff had mentioned earlier. So I went out and spent uh, exactly one day training with Michael Hilton, who you guys probably all, most of you know, and. Um, and then I was the store manager of, of the Valley Store. So I was there from 88 to 93, came back to West LA because my, um, my rock star career in music was launching and I knew that I wasn't long for, for the retail world. And, uh, and we know how that ended up because here I am. <laughs> but um, anyway, so uh, I worked back in LA till 99 and then there got recruited by the outdoor retailer trade show. Um, where I worked as an account executive for five or six years, as a sales manager for a couple years, and then as the show director for uh, almost eight years. And um, so that launched, certainly A16, launched my career into the outdoor industry in a very meaningful way. So that's my nutshell. And so... Uh, and you took all the way to being the show director for the trade show, in this, for the trade show that represents the whole industry. Yeah, you know, and when you say the whole industry, you know, outdoor retailer is a, is a slice of the greater outdoor industry that includes bikes and hunting and fishing and uh, other version, motorized versions of outdoor. What we were was really around the human-powered, uh, you know, backpacking, climbing, mountaineering, um, and, and inclusive of paddle sports and some of the other self-propelled um, activities. So so that that's what outdoor retailers. But to your point, it was both winter and summer markets were in the top 50 trade shows in the country by size. So it was a big, big endeavor, a big event. And I had a big opportunity to, uh, to, uh, you know, gain a higher profile. So I think that's what, you know, helped me get to what, what uh, whatever level I'm at now. So, uh, so then, uh, then came Rob. Then came me. Uh, yeah, so I don't actually know, I don't remember my first experience with A16. 
uh, because it was our local, that was our sporting goods shop. I had an older brother, but he's not dead. I have an older brother. Um, and we were in a heavily, a really great backpacking Boy Scout troop uh, in our neighborhood. And so he was getting his gear at A16 um, long before I was even in the Boy Scouts. And the West LA A16 store was only two miles from the house I grew up in. And so that was a huge part of my growing up and my exposure to the outdoors. Uh, and I had no idea how special that store was, how uh, special the outdoor industry was. As I was growing up, it was just a part of the fabric of our family and our neighborhood and our sphere of friends and family. Um, and so flash forward to college and uh, the summer before my senior year in college, uh, 1990, I walked in for a summer job on a sign posted on the door and uh, eventually sat down with Mr. Sheets for an interview. I had no idea what I was doing or what I was getting into. Uh, Jeff listed off, I think, three positions that were currently open at the West LA store. One was a maybe assistant manager. Another was visual merchandising manager. And the third was to wash sleeping bags in the back room. And he asked me uh, what I was interested in, what I thought I'd be good at. And I said, oh, that visual merchandising manager position, that sounds, that's good for me. Uh, I'm, I'm visual. I had no idea that actually took training and experience and artistic <laughs> eye. And Jeff quickly said, you know, I'm really thinking washing sleeping bags would be a better <laughs> idea for you. So thus started my illustrious career uh, at A16 in, in August of 1990, I think. Um, one of the worst heat waves I can remember. So if you can picture a giant industrial dryer in an uninsulated, unair conditioned uh, back warehouse of a retail shop uh, when it's 112 degrees, that was my introduction to being on the inside of the outdoor industry. Um, and loved it so much in spite of that first experience that I actually decided to put off college. I wanted to stay and keep working there. I had kind of a semester I could play with. Um, that ultimately didn't work out. My parents quickly told me to go back and finish my degree. But four months later, I was back on the doorstep of A16 and, um, and transitioned onto the floor and uh, worked my way up through the ranks. and. Um, you know, from there went on to management positions, worked with Kenji at the Tarzana store, and then came back to the West LA store after Jeff left, and um, then went on to work with, with John D across uh, all the retail stores uh, throughout the, um, the whole chain, and uh, ultimately left in 2002, I think. Um, so I I'm of the group here. I think I'm the furthest removed from the outdoor industry. Um, I went on to, to another area of passion and, and have been developing that over the last uh, 15 plus years. Um, but uh, as Jeff mentioned, um, you know, had such an amazing positive experience with A16 that the friendships and my experiences there, you know, have shaped me. Um, just as much or more than somebody's college experience does, um, A16 was, was huge and those friendships and relationships still remain huge to me today, which, you know, I think kind of my, my final comment on, on how I transitioned uh, from A16 into the, into the real world is similar to other folks who went on from A16, whether in the outdoor industry or, or outside, and that it, in, in how it shaped us. And I know um, that the successes I've had since leaving A16 in a completely different field, um, you know, were huge in, in terms of the impact that A16 had on uh, my uh, customer service skills, um, the quality of, of work that I wanted to produce, uh, how to build relationships, um, all those sorts of things, even down to, uh, and this will make John be happy, just managing a P&L. Um, 
um, you know, all of those, those factors, I was exposed to so much when I worked at Adventure 16 that uh, it, it really built a lot for me for the rest of my career. So I have A16 to, to thank for everything from summiting mountains in the high Sierras to um, reaching some of the peaks in my career, uh, not to mention the, the friendships, which are the most important to me today. That's my story. That was eloquent. The story. <laughs> Nice. Um, well, there, there was one other person we wanted to have on the call, right, Jerry? And I texted him uh, uh, relentlessly in the next past few minutes, and I haven't been able to hail him. So in, in lieu of having the Jerry dog on, yeah, that's Jerry, but um, I actually would, um, <laughs> what I'll do is I'll just do a quick intro as Jerry. So, <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm Jerry. I got hired at 16 from New Orleans. Still in New Orleans. And uh, here's how I got hired. I sent my resume in with a photo and uh, to the to the attention management adventure 16. Uh -huh. And uh, and I, they fell for it. And so then after that, I came out and worked in LA. And then I got to uh, work in San Diego as a manager. And uh, I'm a knucklehead with a couple of the other guys. So uh, uh, that, that's me. And, and that's what you get. And that's what you get, Jerry, for uh, for not making the call. <laughs> but but may I also add that he has another noteworthy accomplishment, and of the four of us, and Eric, I can't speak for you, sorry, but of the four of us sitting here, uh, we're still married to our wives after these 70, 80 years. So is Jerry. And to Jerry's credit, when he met Suzanne at Mardi Gras, on one night, the next day they got married and they're still married. And I think that's for the Jer dog. That's quite a quite a roll of the dice, I guess. <laughs> Man, that's a hats off uh, point right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, I mean, that that's a good segue into kind of the stories, the the, the war stories, or some of our best uh, memories. Well, in a limited time here, about how we got there and what happened there. At Adventure 16 uh, over the years. So, um, um, oh, uh, so um, I, I think that's a that's a great place to to start. Is you know like well, how did the how did Adventure 16 play into your choice of permanent partners in your life? Or, uh, and and uh, that's a really interesting point you just made, uh, Jeff. That. There's four of us, and, and including Jerry, who you know we just channeled, um, five of us that have been married to our wives the entire time. Well, I mean, you know, oh. from from meeting to to now, not yeah. you know with, yeah. without. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, I, I would think know, that's KG, the, the the days get young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's only twelve thirty. Not only, not only did I get married and meet my wife, my future wife, at Adventure 16, but I met the pastor who married my wife and I through Adventure 16. Um, and I think we might be the last of the Mohicans when it comes to who's still married that, that Jeff O'Keefe married. So, um, Not a great track record. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, what is a track record for a pastor or a, you know? Should be none of them. None of them are hitting a hundred percent these days. I don't think. I am. You're a pastor. Yeah. And you've married people. Yes. Three out of three so far. So. Oh, awesome. Can I can I make a little well, announcement too? It's all less than the seven year itch. It's uh, so. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's 2011. Little... Well, maybe it's the maybe it's still. I guess it's been nine years. Go ahead. That's good. Can that's. Can I make an good. announcement? Because I too am now known as Reverend Jeffrey Sheets. Oh, for the love of God. Uh, I'm start get it, the love of God. <laughs> and for the love of God, so done, done. God be with you all. That's yes. my church. <laughs> I know, it's my church too. <laughs> awesome. Well, so then there's still a chance that more, uh, yeah, more no. A16 legacy will continue. <laughs> this ain't going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> May I share um, the story of how I met Sandra then? Please. Can I do that? Absolutely. So Mick starts the Wilderness Outings program in San Diego with Grace Standard, and they're doing backpacking trips. And uh, uh, Monier was up in West LA, 
he did one summer and then I picked it up after that. And we would teach and lead beginning backpacking. Uh, there were other courses too. So I'm at the front of the West LA store, standing there with Stephen Myers at the time, the president, who taught me a lot. Um, and we were at the front of the store and he was probably yelling at me. Um, and my, my future wife walks through the front door and she says to Stephen, who do I talk to about these backpacking trips? And Stephen turns and goes, this guy. So we meet and Sandra goes on to tell me that the structure was classes on Tuesday and Thursday, and then we'd leave on Friday for the weekend in the Sierra. And she told me that she had taken the classes the summer before, and all she wanted to do was go on the trip. And I said, well, you can't just go on the trip. You have to take the class. And she says, well, I already took the class last year. I said, we have to take the class again. So in the first 30 seconds of us meeting, we got into a bit of an argument. And I told her it's important to show up because we're going to go over itinerary and the menu, and you're going to meet people on the trip. So she goes, fine, I'll show up. So when we would have the class and everybody is sitting around, I don't know, 12 or 14 people, we would always go around the room and introduce yourself and share with the group why you're there. Why do you want to take this trip? So people are like, well, I want to get back into backpacking, da, 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 da. It gets to Sandra, and she says, well, I'm here because Jeff's making me be here. <laughs> and I learned on the weekend trip that from her saying that, everybody in the class thought we were already going out. <laughs> but that weekend, uh, I fell in love with her more than she fell in love with me, but we had a lovely connection. And then uh, a couple months later, we got engaged, and uh, then we got married that following September. And it's been 73 years now, 73, <laughs> 74 years. Oh, maybe it just feels like that. No, so we're coming up on 35 this year, so. Uh, the West LA store, just to put a cap on that, um, and maybe it's because of shared common loves and interests and shared common ground, uh, is a very fertile ground for um, uh, relationships uh, for either A, a lifetime, or B, far less than a lifetime. <laughs> But um, it's a, it's, it's a lot, lot of romances. And we've, one of the things we've talked about is, and nobody will do it because nobody's stupid enough to raise their hand, is to try to make a list of all of the marriages that came out of Adventure 16. So thank you. That was lovely. Um, all right. Uh, I will go. Um, those of you, uh, you know, worked with me there, you will, you will remember that I had a penchant for, uh, for cashiers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and I can't really take my hat off because uh, I got this, this, uh, these, these, these ear, ear things on, but, um, so pretty early on in my time at A16, uh, I was, uh, living in Playa del Rey. Oh no, I, yeah, I was living uh, somewhere else. And I, then I moved to Playa del Rey with a guy that I met and he needed a roommate and uh, it was a nice place. And so we split this condo uh, out in Playa del Rey and um, he became a really good friend too. And he was a customer. And then um, we ended, I ended up hosting a, uh, a little get together, uh, you know, after work get together. And it was, I remember it was Charlie Walls and Lynn Jacob and Elizabeth Hahn and uh, yeah, thank you, Jeff and um, uh, some other uh, other folks. There's probably ten maybe all together, and we came over and I had a, a hot tub as part of the condo complex that uh, we lived in. So of course we dominated it, and of course it went to skinny dipping like, immediately. So everyone's got you know nothing on, um, but this one girl who was new and she was a little shy. And so, um, she didn't, she didn't fully disrobe, um, which of course got my attention. <laughs> like, wait a minute, what's, uh, what's behind those clothes there. And, um, but we had started to really just to be friends and we became friends around music. And I think at that time I was playing concerts here and there with my band. And, and, um, and so that's how, uh, we got interested to just be friends and then and then um 
it was really kind of a slow process. I think historically I had been more of a fast, you know, like let's get into this relationship right away thing. But with Susan, it was really different. It was more of a, you know, a friendship that was blossoming and blooming. And then just sort of one day it dawned on me like a, a little bit of a brick, like, oh, well, gosh, I could probably wake up to that face like for the rest of my life. And it, it just slowly occurred to me that I, this is actually kind of a cool thing. So, uh, so we moved in together and then we lived together for like five years before we ever got married. Um, so we, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a slow poke in that way. And so uh, um, we lived in Westchester, we moved to West LA over next to the Buddhist temple, uh, kind of near A16 and then eventually moved to Culver City and then um, here. But uh, so that's the only part of the story I wanted to share about meeting Susan is uh, unlike most of the um, marriages and, and relationships I know were, found, were founded, started with wilderness outings and started with the guide catching the interest of the, uh, of the student. And so uh, kind of like your story, Jeff, because I think you were, weren't you working at Mendocino? Menda Montecito, uh, Montecito, we Sequoia. We got engaged up at Montecito Sequoia, which was a cross-country ski lodge up in the up in Kings Canyon. That was the that was the winter after we had met. Right. Oh, so you had not met there, but you uh, you sealed the deal there, so to speak. Oh, we sealed the deal. Mm hmm. Yes, we did. No, we got engaged on New Year's Eve. There's nothing naughty, naughty about it. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's see the skinny dipping thing. And then, um, so you, uh, Rob, did you, what, you met Juan in high school, huh? Uh, Juan and I met in junior high school. We met in seventh grade in Mrs. Gardner's homeroom class. Uh, and so we met long before going to work at A16. Um, and when... When we met up again after college and I was at A16, this was a completely foreign concept to her. <laughs> you know, not that she wasn't familiar with the outdoors, but she just did not understand why I was working there for $5 an hour. Um, you know, because she was in the you know, giant corporate world of, of Fortune 100 companies and just kind of indulged me, you know, in, in well, she continues to indulge me. <laughs> I was going to say was. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, the, the one uh, long story that sticks out for me the most at A16 was 1994 and the Northridge earthquake. And I was the Tarzana manager at that time. We lived up in Ventura County, just on the county line, and um, scrambled to get into town. I was coming into town to bring supplies to my dad, who uh, their house in West LA had been devastated by the earthquake. And he's like, hey, can you get some propane and a stove and yada yada. And so I'm gonna run by the, the, the Tarzana store and pick up some stuff and head into LA. And I come over the pass on the 101 and the entire valley is on fire. You know, it's just, I'd never seen anything like that before. The whole valley is filled with smoke. I can see flames. Juan and I are driving in, um, get off the, the receipt of exit for the store. And quite literally people are wandering in the middle of the street in their pajamas and robes. Uh, it's still very early in the morning when the sun had just come up. And like now, right? <laughs> and I, I pull up in front of the store and, you know, Tarzana store had big uh, plate glass windows that were constantly getting broken into and smashed. Well, these, you know, a few of them were out and two of my employees are standing in front of the store guarding it because um, they had gone, you know, to their credit, they had gone by the store. And just as they arrived, looters were, were just about to go into the store. And... I said to Juan, I said, you, you know, here's some supplies. Go take them to my parents. I need to stay here and get the store taken care of. So, so the next 24 hours, we're just getting everything locked down. West LA stores dealing with its mess. We're dealing with our mess. The uh, headquarters, 4620 in San Diego is trying to help us get what we need. 
but we closed down the store for at least 24 hours. And uh, Juan's office was located in the valley at that time as well. And that was shut down. So um, a day later when we opened up, because we tried to get open up as quickly as possible because people needed gear for May 16, but we were short of employees because everybody's trying to deal with their family crises at this moment. And so uh, here's Juan having never worked a day in their, of her life at age 16 uh, with a three and a half minute uh, training session on the front counter and the register <laughs> and about eight months pregnant uh, with our first child standing behind the register, ringing up customers uh, for whatever they need for their earthquake supplies, um, wondering what the hell is going on and why I went to work for this company. But uh that that was that was her intersection with a 16. The, the romance started um when we were 12. Uh, i think she was really looking forward to drying sleeping bags in large dryers yeah exactly 